This is your weekly report on corruption in the Philippine government. The police in Baikal region filed criminal and administrative charges on Thursday, the 4th of August, against two officials and 19 personnel of the 503rd Maneuver Company of the Regional Mobile Force Battalion in Masbati Province in connection with the death of patrolman J.P. Ramors allegedly due to hazing. The police regional office 5 filed the charges against the 21 police officers of the said unit for violating Republic Act 11053 which amended RA 8049 or the Anti-Hazing Act of 2018 at the Masbati Prosecutor's Office. Police Major Maria Luisa Kalubakwib, spokesperson of Baikal Police, said the administrative case of grave misconduct was also filed by the Regional Internal Affairs Service against the suspects. They were earlier relieved from their posts and were placed under the custody of RMFB5 in Camp Simeonola in Legazpi City in Albay Province. Ramos, 32, a resident of Talasa town in Camarinas Norte, died while being treated at the Tikeo District Hospital in San Jacinto town in Masbati around 9.30 p.m. on 26 July. He had severe bruises, burns on his chest, wounds on his feet and knees and other body injuries. The autopsy conducted by the hospital on 28 July revealed that the victim died due to cardiorespiratory arrest, deep vein thrombosis secondary to pulmonary embolism, and multiple physical injuries secondary to blunt trauma, but the 503rd Maneuver Company reported that he died solely of cardiorespiratory arrest, and urine and blood infection with severe high blood pressure. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency arrested two suspected drug pushers, including a police officer, and seized 3.4 million pesos worth of shabu in Calacan City, as part of the strengthened anti-drug campaign of the administration of President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. in a report released Friday. The agency said members of its Northern District Office in Metro Manila arrested Corporal Mark Jefferson Lopez, a member of the Calacan City Police Station Substation 13, and John Rasta Munoz in an operation along Zabad Road in Barangay 172 at around 5 p.m. Thursday. The suspects yielded around 500 grams of shabu in three transparent plastic bags, two mobile phones, and boodle money. Authorities also seized Lopez's Philippine National Police and his issued firearm Glock 17 with serial number 2102, pistol magazine, and 19 pieces of 9mm live ammunition. The suspect, detained at the PDEA headquarters, will be charged with violation of Republic Act 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act. Meanwhile, Northern Police District Chief Brigadier General Ulysses Cruz ordered the administrative relief of the Substation 13 Commander, Assistant Commander, Shift Supervisor, and Lopez's team members. All of them were disarmed of their service firearm and placed under camp restriction pending the in-depth investigation which covers Lopez's current and previous designation. We do not condone the wrongdoings and irregularities of our erring personnel. I will assure the public that they will feel and face the full force of the law, Cruz said in a statement. The Supreme Court has affirmed the dismissal from service of a former employee of the Department of Foreign Affairs after she was found guilty of a crime involving moral turpitude. In a 10-page decision promulgated on 15 June, the High Court affirmed the 2018 resolution of the Court of Appeals and denied the petition for review filed by Rosa Gonzalbo Macatangue. The petition is not meritorious. The Court affirms the CA ruling. The imposition of the penalty of dismissal from service is proper, the court said. According to the SE, Makatange did not contest that she is guilty of the administrative offense of conviction of a crime involving moral turpitude and that bigamy involves moral turpitude. Citing the uniform rules on administrative cases and the civil service, the court said that conviction of a crime involving moral turpitude is punishable with dismissal from service. In 2014, the Civil Service Commission National Capital Region found Makatange guilty of the administrative offense and mitted the penalty of dismissal from service, along with imposable accessory penalties. This was after a complaint was filed before the CSC alleging that Modesto Makatange Jr. married the petitioner in the 19th of February 97 while married to another. The Court of Appeals affirmed the ruling of the CSC in the 20th of August 17. However, Makatange argued that the CA erred in not considering the mitigating circumstances in her case. For the Supreme Court, mitigating circumstances such as length of service, first commission, and outstanding performance, cannot be applied. The court rules in the negative. The CA is correct in not appreciating the mitigating circumstances petitioner invokes. 
the facts of the instant case do not justify the mitigation of the prescribed penalty, it said. The High Court stressed that bigamy cannot be taken lightly. Bigamy cannot be taken lightly as its commission reflects the person's character. It involves moral turpitude settled in jurisprudence, it said. Petitioner flagrantly disregarded the law in marrying Modesto despite her knowledge of his prior and existing marriage, as the appellate court aptly observed. This shows her moral depravity and cast. S. Serious doubt on her fitness and integrity to continue in the public service, it added. Members of the anti scalawag unit of the Philippine National Police, PNP, have arrested two ex-police officers wanted for violation of Republic Act 10591, the Comprehensive Firearms and Ammunition Regulation Act, in separate operations in the provinces of Pangasinan and Rizal. In a statement on Sunday, Brig General Samuel Nasian, Chief of the Integrity Monitoring and Enforcement Group, IMEG, said their operatives together with Tate Municipal Police Station, MPS, Personnel initiated a search warrant operation that led to the arrest of retired patrolman Ephraim Ferrer Jr. in Barangay Santa Ana, Tete, Rizal last the 4th of August. Nasian said Ferrer is responsible for the proliferation of illegal drugs and a protector of drug personalities operating in the areas of Barangay Pinag Buhatan and Pasig City and C6 in Tete. He is also involved in carnapping, gun running and carrying unlicensed firearms. Confiscated during the search was one unit Omska 40 caliber pistol and assorted live ammunition. The arrested suspect was brought to Tete MPS for documentation and proper disposition. Meanwhile, SPO1 Armando Arenas Jr. Jr., a dismissed member of the Quezon City Police District's Station 6 Batazan, was arrested by virtue of a search warrant by members of the Immigrant Pangasinan Police Provincial Office operatives in Barangay Tambak, Bayambang, Pangasinan last the 2nd of August. The dismissed policeman was reported for indiscriminate firing whenever he is under the influence of liquor and still introducing himself as cop. The suspect was arrested and was brought to Bayambang PS. The search was done in an orderly manner which was witnessed by the barangay officials. Nasian said, confiscated during the search were a 45 caliber pistol with the face serial number and inserted magazine containing 8 live bullets, as well as other ammunition. The arrested suspect is now under the custody of Bayambang Municipal Police Station for documentation and eventual filing of case. The city legal officer has recommended the filing of administrative charges against the city veterinarian and eight others found to have euthanized 11 stray dogs, five of them puppies, in Barangay Naves, Mandorao on the 20th of July. In a report furnished to the local media on Friday, lawyers Joseph Edward Arano and Loni Vitabo submitted their recommendation to the mayor's office on Thursday. In their findings, the city lawyers noted that the city veterinarian, Dr. Thomas Fortiza Jr., has failed to prove that the dogs were dangerous, suffering from pain or discomfort, or diagnosed with a disease. The policy of the state is not to outrightly euthanize stray dogs but to impound them, make them available for adoption, and only under exceptional situation, such as when they are found sick or rabid or vicious or some other justifiable purpose, that the law sanctions killing them, whether instantly or after observation period, the lawyer said in their report. They added that the 11 dogs could have been impounded for three days and if suspected to be rabid, they should have been isolated and observed accordingly and submitted to laboratories examination upon death. In a talk on the 27th of July with the investigating team, Fortiza admitted that he and his team, composed of Restituto Ebrida, Junival Sampiano, Joseph Sesbruno, Raymond Ravedo, Lito Amonida, Ellinger Swarting, Julio Fortiza, and Mark Clamour, conducted an operation in Barangay Naves to catch stray dogs but in the process killed or euthanized them, including the five puppies. Fortiza pointed out that there were rampant stray dogs in the area, rabies victims at the adjacent barangay, and consistent positive cases for nine years. The city veterinarian also cited provisions of the Animal Welfare Act of 1998 and the Anti-Rabies Act of 2007 as among his legal basis for the mercy killing of the dogs. Fortiza was acting in response to the request of Naves Punong Barangay J.J. Janael Mercado on the 14th of July to send a competent team in order to catch stray dogs as they cause danger to his constituents. Fortiza also told the investigating team that Mercado requested that the dogs be euthanized, directing them to a spot in the barangay where the team could kill and bury the animals. A former police officer tagged as leader of a criminal group has been arrested in Tayug, Pangasinan, authorities reported yesterday. Former Lieutenant Colonel Wilson Magpoli was collared in Barangay Legaspi based on a warrant for murder. 
Philippine National Police Chief General Rodolfo Azur and Junior said in a statement, Magpali, who was arrested by personnel of the PNP Integrity Monitoring and Enforcement Group, is reportedly the leader of a gun for hiring targeting politicians in La Union and Ilocos region. Recovered from the suspect were a 9mm pistol and ammunition. Magpali denied he is the head of the criminal group. The Procurement Service of the Department of Budget and Management, PSDBM, did not exercise due diligence in buying 1.386 billion pesos worth of personal protective equipment, PPE, for COVID-19 front liners as these were found to be unauthorized for sale or public use, according to the Commission on Audit, COA. State auditors said the seven contracts for PPE lacked the required documents such as the Certificate of Medical Device Notification, CMDN, and a product notification from the Food and Drug Administration, FDA. In its 2021 audit report on the PSDBM, the COA said the agency cannot assure its client agencies of the safety of the PPEs meant for healthcare workers directly exposed to the COVID-19 virus. The PSDBM is an attached agency of the budget department that has been under fire for questionable procurements on behalf of other government agencies, the latest of which involved the purchase of pricey but slow laptops for the Department of Education. The PSDBM did not exercise due diligence in procuring the PPE items, neither in crafting the technical specifications nor in the review and evaluation of the technical capacity of the supplier to deliver the goods to be procured using the non-discretionary criteria, the COA said. It added, in the absence of the CMDN for the PPE items procured, the PPE were not authorized for sale or for public use. The COA found that all seven contracts lacked the CMDN, which is proof that the product has been notified with the FDA prior to its manufacture, importation, export, sale, distribution, transfer, or use in testing, promotion, advertisement and sponsorship. The CMDN is a requirement under FD Circular 2020-31, which states that importers and manufacturers of PPE should secure a CMDN prior to the commercial sale and distribution of such medical devices. The Commission on Audit, COA, has flagged the Land Transportation Office, LTO, for the undue payment given to its foreign information technology, IT, contractor, Dermalog, despite the incomplete turnover of deliverables for the 3.19 billion peso road IT infrastructure project, in its 2021 consolidated annual audit report, CAAR, for the Department of Transportation, DOTR, the COA said that LTO's acceptance of customized core applications with missing processes had caused undue payment to the vendor, which is disadvantageous to the government. These core applications include the driver's licensing system, DLS, and the motor vehicle inspection and registration system, MVIRS which were included in component A of the said IT project also known as the Land Transportation Management System, LTMS. According to COA, the DLS and MVIRS have unresolved issues as of the 20th of December 21 and their functionalities and processes are not yet fully configured, which cause disruptions in the operations of various LTO sites. In case on City Licensing Center, for example, the LTMS automatically rejects transactions of all motorists aged 65 years old and above and has inadequate examination terminals to cater to the big volume of applicants. The new IT system has also caused massive delays in motor vehicle registration in LTO Baguio as reported by a local news channel regional news channel, RNG Luzon on its Facebook page last 5 May, 2022. According to the report, LTO clients are lining up early in the morning in the hopes of getting the documents they need, only to be told to return the other day. The LTO Baguio admitted that the delays in transactions were due to the rollout of LTMS, which requires more processes, and other factors such as slow internet connection. That's all for this week. I'll see you next week with more stories of corruption and foolishness within the Philippine government.